Coltrane was living in the middle of bebop, growing up learning his jazz by listening to Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, Thelonious Monk, Charlie Christian. In that melting soul of crazy jazz, Coltrane came out. As saxophone players, we always connect Charlie Parker to bebop. And we connect John Coltrane to modern jazz. John Coltrane was a young musician caught in the magic of the bebop era, as played by Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie in the late 40s. Coltrane came out of this crazy jazz environment where jazz was invented every day. He was literally living jazz and inventing jazz at the same time. Coltrane invented his own style of playing. This was, as we know it, not one style, but basically more styles during the time when he played. This is, for example, Coltrane Bebop from 1946 when he was in the Marine. <laughs> example is this, Green Dolphin Street from 1960 with Miles Davis, Sheets of Sound and Almost Free. <laughs> then there's a modal free and spiritual period already in 1966. thousands of names of all the different styles and I do not know most of them. But music is not about classifying, but about creating and inspiring. Hi there, I'm Søren Balegård and welcome to Søren Balegård's saxophone lessons. Let's do this. The last couple of weeks I've zoomed in on John Coltrane's solo on Oleo played with Miles Davis. This is the version from 1956 with the Miles Davis Quintet. It's a relatively simple rhythm change, which we totally can relate to. Already in the start of his solo, Coltrane is going right into this bebop lane. Here he's clearly playing the so-called bebop scale. But Coltrane is using the bebop scale connected to the G7 and not like he's playing here from the C major 7 to the C7. Coltrane uses very, very ingeniously the F sharp as a leading tone towards the G on the C7 chord. This is the fifth of that C7. Coltrane puts the G7 bebop scale into use where we're not expecting this. On a C major to C7. What I mean by this is Coltrane probably already played or practiced the G7 bebop scale to use it on the G7 chord. And being creative and very, very musical as he was, putting it into use wherever he can, seeing an opportunity on the C major 7 and the C7 in this rhythm change. Looking at this mix of using a dominant scale or dominant function on the tonic function is really ingenious. Here, a G7 chord. G7 chord on the heavy beats of the bar. Looking at the chords, the chord notes and the scale and comparing this, we get this picture. The notes that hit the beat is the D, the ninth of the C major. This is explainable on a C major 9 chord. The ninth. The F on the second beat is more of a thing. And there are so many ways to interpret this. F is an approach note to G, which is the target note, on the third beat. Another way to look at it is that Coltrane is not playing a C major chord, but playing a G minor 7 chord. The F is then the seventh of the G minor 7 chord. The G minor is the 2 in the 2, 5, 1 G minor C7 going to the F. Which is the fourth degree in C major, which we're hitting in bar six. Those were the two ways springing into my mind when thinking of this way of playing the bebop scale. The rest is just C7 played down the scale. Hitting that G on the third beat and hitting the E on the fourth beat. 
Using the dominant bebop scale like this on other dominant chords is really a great tool to have in your toolbox when playing jazz. If you want to put this in your own solos, I've made a couple of lines where you could easily do this. In the simplest form, the G7 bebop scale can be played over a C major chord like this, just running down the scale. Looking at the chord's weak and strong beats, you have the G on the first beat, on the second beat you have this F, but the second beat is not a strong beat, so that's okay. That F on the second beat, that's leading very strongly towards the E, which is a chord note, but it's on the 2 end. And therefore, well, you can say it's a leading tone towards the E, you're getting this a little bit off the beat, and then you're hitting that D afterwards, which is on the beat. That's really okay. Then you have the D on the third beat, and you have a B on the fourth beat. The G, the D and the B are all chord notes of the C major chord. Another way to use the G7 bebop scale over a C major chord is postponing the F to the weak fourth beat in the bar. In this example I play the bebop scale up from the G to the B and down and then I apply this bebop part, the chromaticism. In the second half of the bar I add the maneuver which I had in the first part of the bar before, playing down the bebop scale. Again we strive to get the target notes on the heavy beats of the bars. And here we are pretty much successful. First part of the bar is pretty obvious, it's G on the first beat, B on the second beat. G on the third beat, that's all good. And then we hit that F on the fourth beat. We describe the F as a direct leading tone towards the E. Then you have at the end of the line the E and the D next to each other. If you look at the former example, we have an F as an approach note, F, F sharp, G. Here the F is leading down to the E before it was leading up F sharp to G. The F is a great leading tone towards the E because of the high F to F. Sometimes I make these small jazz rules or remembering rules for myself. Of course all the rules can be used and broken as you see fit. The rule for these two licks or this way of thinking can be down a bebop scale on a tonic chord at the approach notes on the weak beats. Something like that. Just as a remembering rule, when you play these lines or when you make these lines, dominant bebop scale on tonic chords, remember to add the approach notes on the weak beat. Always welcome to break the rules, very important in jazz. The inspiration and creativity of John Coltrane is immense. Already five bars later in his solo, John Coltrane uses bebop again in a new way. <laughs> On the 2-5 in bar 4, going to the C major in bar 5, Coltrane uses the bebop scale as we have seen many many times before. Just going up the scale. Analyzing this, we get the target notes exactly on the spot where we need them in the bar, on the strong beats. Great! The root, the D minus 7, the D comes on the 1. The F we have on the two, adding the bebop chromatic passing note on the two and very weak beat leading towards the the root note of the G7 chord. And we hit the B on the fourth beat, the third of the G7 chord. When we look at how often we use the bebop scale just in one go, John Coltrane shines through once more. We use the bebop scale to get the chord notes on the beats, on the strong beats, to get it sounding really right. And we only use, mostly only use, the bebop scale, this dominant bebop scale, on dominant chords of course. Don't hang yourself in the details, okay? But still. When Coltrane uses the bebop scale, the G7 bebop scale, in this way, over D minor G7, he hits 
all the target notes on the right beats. It basically just turns the scale around and starts on another place in the scale. Playing the bebop scale in this way is the only way you can get the target notes of a 2-5 when you're playing up the scale. You get the D minor and the G7 spot on. It's so clear. This way of playing is an amazing way of playing your 2 5 ones and trading the bebop scale in another way. In another way you can use it over 2 5 ones, stating the 2 5 ones. So I've taken it in a few keys. F major, the 2 5 one is G minor C7. B flat major, the 2 5 one is C minor 7 F7. G major, the 2 5 one is A minor D7. D major, the 2 5 one is E minor 7 A7. The third example of how Coltrane is using bebop in this amazing solo on Oleo. In the fifth bar of the rhythm change, Coltrane is choosing not to play the C major chord which is there, but playing a full bar of C7. Again, Coltrane is using the power of the strong and weak beats amazingly. On the first three strong beats, he puts the C, the B flat and the D, the root the 7th and the 9th, right on the beats. All clear and really great notes to display C7. Then on the 4th beat he adds the F, which is not a chord note on the C7. But you can argue that this approach note to the F major chord in the 6th bar really works. In this way the line is perfect. What Coltrane is doing. Often I hear Coltrane play this amazingly clear line towards the target. It's the target note in the next bar or in the next period. He's thinking that far. In this bar, of course he's playing a C7, but I think he's more aiming for that F major chord, that, that A in the sixth bar. He's really thinking longer lines. When we are micromanaging the scales, the chords and the chromatic approach note and encirclings and all that stuff, it really fast becomes very, very complicated jazz. And it doesn't have to sound better like that. Clarity. When you're looking at how Coltrane actually puts his lines together, it makes so much sense when you're thinking one bar or two bars at a time. It is really simple. The analysis of this will therefore also be in very broad lines, not into the chromatic details of what's this and what's that. Broad lines. Why? Because I really think Coltrane is thinking what I mentioned earlier, bar to bar, two bar, three bar, four bars, like that. I don't think Coltrane is thinking his lines vertical but much more horizontal into the next bar or the next two bars or three bars thinking in ideas melodic structures target notes having tons of material to pull out your sleeve and basically just putting this material together making beautiful melodic lines on the a7 there he leads it directly into this d this is the first line we analyzed here is used in the D minor 7 G7 as we saw in the second example using bebop over other chords than it's meant to. Again leading very very clearly in a straight line towards this C. Coldron could have ended his solo here, it'll be a short solo, but he could. It's so clear boom ba doo ba diddle even boom. Ready, finished. Nothing more to do. The third line comes along here right there in his solo, using it to get to that beautiful A. And then we see this really strong straight line from the B flat going straight up to that A. No chromatics, no funny things, no encirclings, just going straight into this A. In bar six, in the form, Coltrane hits the third of both the F and the F minor chord. The A, and the A flat, giving us a really beautiful guide tone line A, A flat, G, 
and then down that scale towards that C again. Playing a little bit of C scale around the C. Leading towards this D already. He's basically thinking D on that A7. Where do we have to go? Playing this. Sorry, I added an extra note there because I think I hear that if you have a solution to, of, if you have an idea about what he's actually playing in this bar exactly, because I listened to this 100 times and I get this in this bar, this is bar seven of this form. <laughs> But I saw three or four transcriptions with all different things. In this transcription, well, I added a C in there. So, the leading tones toward this D is very strong. The F, the C, the C sharp, the E, and then to the D. Crazy strong. In the last bar, Coltrane basically just plays up that bebop scale. We saw this in the earlier example, just running up that bebop scale. Coltrane plays a lot of scale notes leading directly towards his targets. Not really a lot of encircling chromatic notes and stuff like that. Basically, straight towards the target. Playing the functions really, really clear. Hitting the target notes exactly on the point. This is what I like so much about John Coltrane. The clarity. What's your favorite thing about John Coltrane's play? What's your favorite thing about Coltrane's playing? Put it in the comment. I would really like to hear from you. Do you have any questions about this topic? Add it in the comment. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button. Share this video. If you want to hear more from me, I'll post a video out there every week. Great new stuff about improvising and saxophone. Your support, like, subscribe, shares. Really means a lot to me. Thank you. All the links mentioned in this video are in the description below. Play music, have fun.